Hello and welcome back to Bookish Theories. Today we take a look at Antim Samidare and its connections to Dark Moon the Grey City. We'll talk a bit about the concept, the message, also how cool is this move? Insane! Anyway, Samidare is the first single released after the end of the first Stalin trilogy. Back in that series, these lonely wolves found people who were the same as them and created a pact that was ready to take over the world without fear or doubt. As this adventure begins, however, Samidare shows that despite their initial thought, the members of the pack are different from each other, and because of that some tensions might arise and some arguments might take place. According to the press release, Samidare explores the conflicting emotions they feel as they overcome these differences, while also showing their unchanging determination to stay together and move forward in the same direction. In Japanese, Samidare refers to the reign of the fifth lunar month, so between the 21st of May and the 21st of June. This early summer rain announces a change of season, the end of spring that makes the cherry blossoms dance in the wind, and the beginning of summer that is warm and sunny. In the song, Samidare is compared to a moment of sadness, confusion and misunderstanding that one can experience even going through the warmest season of their life. Despite the beautiful song and the beautiful visuals, in fact, the track is meant to portray the not always beautiful emotions that people tend to experience at least once in their youth. This moment of conflict is temporary, doesn't last, so as unpleasant as it may be, it's almost endearing because it announces a new season that will be even happier than the last. As the lyrics say, despite their differences, the love they feel for each other goes beyond the seasons, so even if it rains, this love cannot be erased. Now, as we see in a second, this theme is very much connected to what happens in Dark Moon the Grey City, but as explained in the press release, the message of Samidare applies to Antim's real life experiences just as well. As a group that was created through a survival show, Antim has gone through a lot together. They not only overcame the stress of the show, in some cases even more than once, but they've been doing everything together ever since. They live together, work together, grow together, so naturally for this to work they all have to put in some effort and also be understanding of each other's personalities. Having nine different people agree all the time is a difficult task, but the song explains that even if there might have been some bumps in the road, these are not only part of the process, but also a necessary step to get to know each other better and strengthen their bond as a group. When it comes to Dark Moon the Grey City, on the other hand, Samidare compares the early summer rain to the pack mourning the loss of Giri. In the story, Giri was the half of the pack that was initially made out of Naja, Kenzi and Tahel. He was like an older brother to them, and when they eventually end up in Greyville, Giri also becomes the mentor of Khan, who never knew who he was or where he belonged. Giri helps Khan understand that he's not the devil people think he is, and in the series he has to protect him and the others from the attack of the Red Hood sisters, which are vampires with the power to hypnotize people and make them do whatever they want. Giri's death is also what ends up bringing the pack together, because as we saw back in Under the skin, his passing leads to Khan becoming the Alpha and convincing the other members to join them as well. Bear in mind, before Khan becomes the Alpha, the boys are initially separated into different units, sometimes even fighting each other due to misunderstandings of vampire hypnosis. We have Khan himself, who at first is a lone wolf and barely know who he is. Then we have Nadja, Kenzi and Tahel that grew up together and traveled with Giri. Then Luca and Louie, who are twins and a unit on their own. And last but not least, we have Raslan, Kamil and Mahan, who initially form a small pack by themselves and are being mind controlled by the vampires. Bringing all these people together in one pack is not an easy task, so Samidare not only portrays the aftermath of Giri's death, but also the boys adjusting to the new dynamics of a pack of nine. In the video we see a lot of tension among the members, but those that end up fighting are those that initially weren't in the same unit. As Khan is dancing alone and coping with Giri's death by himself, Enzi and Camille have a candle match that escalates until they actually end up fighting for real. In the webtoon, they fight too after Giri's death, so it might be a reference to that. In turn, we also see Louis pushing Mahan, which, again, are two wolves that initially don't have anything to do with each other. The member that by far has the most beef, though, is Najak, who fights Luca, side eyes Raslan and Mahan, and eventually even punches him in the face. Now, to be fair, this is not really surprising, because Najak has basically beef with everything that moves. In this instance, however, his anger is mostly triggered by his concern for Tahel, who is one of the little ones and the one that has been taking Giri's death the hardest. Najak is also worried for Khan, but it's obviously Tahel the one that worries him the most. That's his baby, so his problems become Najak's problems as well. In the video, in fact, his biggest fight happens because Mahan bumps into Tahel by mistake. This disrespect is the final straw for Najak. All his pain for Giri's death, the memory of the past, and the concern for his brothers overwhelm him to the point that he's blinded by anger and punches Mahan in the face. This leads to an even bigger fight 
that involves everybody else, all the while Tuck is surprised by this. He was just trying his best to cope, and when the contents of his locker are finally revealed, we also see that he might have been thinking about Khan as well. As we see at the beginning, flowers are growing out of Giri's grave, and Khan picks one as a keepsake. In the changing room, though, he's seemingly letting go of this flower because it's withering, but when Nicholas opens Tucky's locker, we discover that Tile actually planted this flower and is now growing strong. Now, to me, this is a reference to the ending of the Grey City, because in there there was also a plant with a similar symbolism. Right after his mom and Giri's death, Khan finds a small plant at the inn and throws it away because it's withering. After a few days, however, Tahel makes him find the plant now in full bloom, meaning that even if a stage of life has ended, a new one has just begun. This blooming plant and the message that Tai leaves Khan is what convinces him to become the alpha and create the pack, so the flower symbolism to me is a callback to that. In the story, becoming the alpha is Khan's destiny. It's something that he was born to do even if he doesn't feel ready, but when in the video he sees the boys fighting, that's the moment he finally takes action. The moment he intervenes is the moment he takes leadership, and sure enough, the rain stops falling, allowing the cherry blossoms to dance in the air. By the end of Samidare, the Samidare has stopped, and a new chapter of their life is about to begin. To see what this chapter has in store for us, for now we'll have to wait and see, but in the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, please think about liking and subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you next time, bye bye!